Welcome back, folks. We're still talking about recursion. And now we're going to explore a really basic problem that we usually use across the country teaching recursion. It's called factorial. So let's jump right into it. So factorial is a mathematical relationship that says, if you want to compute the factorial of a number, the input, it's a function. So factorial is a function. It takes in a single integer number, non-negative integer, so 0, 1, 2, 3. And output is that number times itself one less, times itself one less until you get to 1, OK? So if I ask for 4, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, OK? And I believe that's 24. So that's what factorial is. Factorial ends up being a recursive definition. If you look at the definition, it says, well, how would you define this? Well, it says n factorial is 1 if n equals 0. Otherwise, n factorial is n times the quantity n minus 1 factorial. So it starts, it's handed to you as a recursive definition. So your recursion bells should be going off. Oh, my goodness, I better use recursion for this if the definition is recursion. And in fact, it's probably the easiest coding you've ever done if I'm handing you the definition recursively to put it into code. And I show you the code on the far right. And it looks exactly like the definition. So when you get an inductive definition or recursive definition, think recursion, it's much easier to write that way, right? If I gave this to you and I say write this, but you can't use recursion, well, now it's harder. Well, you're setting up a, 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 you know, a product variable, and you got to initialize it. and you got, It's harder work. I think it's harder work than just copying the straight definition to code. Okay, So often you have, it just gets handed to you. So if you look at the code, if n equals 0, report 1. Otherwise, n times n minus 1, quantity factorial. Done. So what we usually do, <clears throat> the students here locally have seen this in discussion, what we usually do is you act this out. Or I say, I would like 4 factorial. And I turn to the left. And there'd be somebody who's asleep. And this is the person at the factorial factory. There's somebody who works in the, you know, the label says factorial company, Bob. And he, he say, I'd like to hire somebody to hire factorial. And they say, and they say please wake up. I'm, so this is called the subcontractor model, where you're hiring people to wake up. Okay? So I say, wake up. And they say, huh? huh? Oh, OK, what do I want me to do? Please do 4 factorial. OK, 4 factorial. Got it. OK, what's the code say? For, I'm 4 factorial. I'm handed 4, and I'm the factorial guy. OK, is 4 0? Nope. I'm at the recursive case now. Then I say, I'm going to do, I'm going to return to my caller 4 times 4 minus 1, 3, 3 factorial. I need to hire somebody. Wake up. And I, hire, I wake up this guy, right? So now I'm waiting. I'm still pending. And I went, wake up. And then the 3 guy, huh? what happened? What happened? I want you to do 4 factorial. Huh? Sorry? I'm sorry, 3 factorial. Three, three factorial. Okay, three factorial. Wake up. Okay, I'm three factorial now. So now a second person wakes up. This is not this is me. This is so three factorial wakes up and says, "Okay, three is three zero. No, okay, I'm three times two factorial. I better hire somebody to do two factorial. Now I'm going to hire a third person. I need to wake up. I need to get a two factorial. Huh? Oh, okay, two factorial. Let's see. Is two zero? No. All right, two times one factorial. I need to hire somebody to do one factorial. Wake up. Huh? Okay, one factorial." Is 1 equal to 0? No. OK, I need to do the next line, base case, the, the recursive case. 1 times 1 minus 0 is 0 factorial. I have slow motion. Turn to wake up. Huh? I need 0 factorial. Huh? 0 factorial. OK. Is n equal to 0? Yes. Base case. OK, I'm going to report 1 to the person who hired me. There are five people waiting for their answer, all in a line. So wake up, OK? 0 factorial. I'm going to return 1. 0 factorial is 1. So the guy 1 factorial who hired 0 said, OK, I take your 1, multiply by my 1. 1 factorial is also 1. 1 factorial is 1 to the 2 person. 2 says, OK. 2, I take your 1. And now, this is, by the way, in the bottom part. This is in the lower part of this, OK? So now I'm coming back. I go all the way down, hire those people. And now we came back, we came back. OK, return 1 to the 2 factorial. Take your 1, multiply by my 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 factorial returns 2. 2 factorial. Hands it to the 3. 3, give this to me. OK, here's 2 factorial in my hand. 3 times 2 factorial, I have 3. This is 2 factorial is 2. That's 6. 3 factorial is 6. 3 factorial is 6 to the guy who did 4. 4 says, OK, take your 6. I'm 4 factorial. 4 times 3 factorial, which was 6, 24. 4 factorial is 24. And me, Dan, says, 4 factorial is 24. Thank you very much. 
24, and I report 24. But along the way, there's a little picture on the bottom. I went all the way down and came all the way up. That's how that works. So the mental model, the machine model, is really important, OK? So what we're going to do next is we're going to show you a demo of how to actually change a working version of code, the top guy, n factorial. We're going to show you how to do this in a demo to be able to trace through code. Most of you don't know how to actually have kind of debugging and trace. We're going to show you how to go into Snap and have a trace list that keeps track of when you enter a function and when you exit the function to help explain that. This is useful in overall debugging your Snap code. So even going forward as you're doing your own projects, as you're doing much, much larger projects, doing the trace is, e I even use the trace. When I'm really stuck, I'm like, what's being called? What's happening? Even I do the trace, OK? So stay with us. Next video, we'll do the trace.